This is Measuring 101, and I've got an array of measuring cups and spoons out to show you the differences. It's actually very simple. Uh, this is traditionally used for measuring liquids, and part of the way I can tell that, not just because I cook all the time, is it's got an easy pour spout, and then you can see through the glass and get exactly the amount of liquid measurement uh, precisely by looking through the glass Pyrex measuring cup. And this is quite large. It goes from a quarter cup to two cups. These measuring cups, you can use them for liquids, but you know, you risk the, the chance of spillage. You know, if you tip a little, you'll lose some in the measurement. So these are traditionally used for drier ingredients like flour, rice, things like that. And then these are your measuring spoons. On my recipes, uh, it'll say one and a small lowercase t, that would be a teaspoon, which is this size, and then uh, a higher case, capital T, would be a tablespoon, which is the larger one. And then of course they have other increments, a quarter inch, I mean a quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon, things like that. So I'll just quickly show you how to measure a dry ingredient. And it is important, I, I use these little cups and bowls when I'm preparing a recipe. I'll, it's called mise en place, and it means that you get all your little components measured out and ready to mix, and then that way the recipe, I think, goes faster, unless it's just a couple items on the recipe. So I'm measuring some brown basmati rice, which is on your in quite a few of your recipes, I do encourage you to be cooking brown rice by now exclusively when you are making rice because it's whole grain and far better for the residents, clients, and you. And then you can see I've measured to the top and I just put it in a bowl and put it to the side. So basically that's measuring 101 and I'll see you next time.